It's not Alan in the back. Yeah. It's Alan, isn't it? I think it is. It's Alan. Is Alan on? Alan's yeah. in there somewhere. Is that everybody who's joined? Um, we think Alan's there. We think Alan's there somewhere. There's the list. Oh. So it's kind yeah, of funny. Alan's there. Hi, Alan. Ah, come on. What did you do? There you go. Okay. You'll steam it because. Oh, yes. I'm missing yes, yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Give it to find the secretary. Alan. I don't see Kimberly right. I think that's the only person we're missing. Okay. And we have somebody additional, a Tiffany Willis, that I don't recognize. Is that? The Tiffany. Zoom users command. Who is it? No. This is Matt. Oh, guy. that's Matt. Yeah. Okay. This is the picture. Uh, I don't know if it's a guest. Am I a guest? No. no. Oh, okay. They're not. Okay. Oh, because they're not sharing. I'm not. Okay. I'm good. Awesome. Thank you. Um, first things first, uh, let's go ahead and approve the March meeting minutes. Those were included in the packet. Is there any discussion on the meeting minutes as presented? I know that cat is not there. Um, we will want to somewhere. I think we have to record that open vote over email. Um, I'll reach back out to Cat because we don't necessarily have to approve minutes um, within the month. Um, so we can go ahead and, and move a motion to approve these. And then I'll talk to, to Cat to make sure that our email vote is recorded appropriately in the record. So do we have a motion? So moved. All right. Um, a second? <laughs> all right. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, passes. Perfect. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and open up our public comment period. Uh, looks like Tiffany wrote in the chat. Can't unmute yourself, but work with Ken Friday at the county. Um, is there anyone here? There's no one else there in, in the room, right, for public comment? Um, uh, Brian Bowman, right? Brian Bowman is here, but he has no comment. Okay, awesome. And I assume, Tiffany, you don't have a comment. You just join in to listen. She can't unmute herself in a message. Okay. Yep. But she says yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and close the public comment period. Uh, first up on the agenda is a New Burgundy Bypass Trail update. Casey, I believe you've got that. I do. Um, so we, uh, back in March, we put out an RFP for a construction manager. Uh, general contractor and that is due tomorrow so i can't really speak on that other than we have uh, three proposals anticipated and we'll get to choose and pick and choose from that a um, little bit of the so that will probably be approved somewhere around the beginning of May. And we're highly anticipating that because we're running into some problems and cost issues on that trail. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues was the construction cost increase of 21% within the eight month period. Um, well, we're gonna work with the contractor and see if we can figure out a way to reduce that 
Also, we've talked to the Oregon Community Pathways ODOT grant, um, Alan Thompson, and we'll probably have that contract amended because he's aware of some of the problems that we're facing uh, currently ODOT's um, working on phase 2A of the bypass, which is interchange of 219 and Wynuski. And that was supposed to go out to bid this April. Um, I think it's been extended until August of this year, talking with Andrew Walker, who's the project engineer. Uh, and that really kind of puts a wrinkle in things because the area off of industrial that we're going to use for um, a staging area and um, that's part of the existing pathway that's there they're going to borrow use it for a borrow pit and take some of the fill they need for the ramps on the bypass to uh, and re reconfigure the pathway going down to the bridge that we're proposing makes it really difficult to uh, build a bridge. Let's put it that way. So we're going to see what happens. Um, then we've had discussions with the city of Newburgh and the mill site owners. And, um, without going further into that discussion, the cost of the railroad crossing as it sits now is $1.5 million. And we don't really want to go there. And so that was one of the other things we brought up to ODOT was the requirements of the city, uh, building River Street out and providing that rail crossing when nobody really knows for sure whether it's going to be used um, or what's going to happen with the mill property. Um, I've heard answers of, yeah, we want a, a tram or yes, we want to leave it open for in case some industrial use wants it for a building down there. Uh, it is a double track. At, on River Street, and it it's posed a lot of problems with the uh, there's little frogs that derail the tracks right in within the sidewalk area, and those would have to be moved back, and basically everything would have to be reconfigured. So we're going to try to build the bridge, build the pathway, so that it's a usable portion of pathway from industrial to. Uh, through 11th to River Street. We're gonna stop it there. We're not gonna go the rail crossing. Uh, the city has urban renewal funds that they can use to build a rail line if and when the property ever gets developed. Uh, and we don't think that we should be responsible for something that that's gonna get done regardless and we shouldn't have to pay for it. So, I've uh, a discussion with Mr. Worthy Monday regarding that, and he he said that's probably the the most sane approach that he could think of is to just kind of stop where you get into trouble and maybe start up on the other side and and go that direction. But we do we have applied for phase two, um, so. Maybe we'll get some of that money as well and be able to go further. But right now, that's kind of where it sits. And I'll know more next month when we have a contractor on board. Um, and hopefully we can provide with provide you with some more insight into that. Uh, currently, it's the project's designed, engineered at, and it's sitting around 60%, but it's not there yet. Like I said, there's lots of moving parts, so uh, it just seems that, uh, you know, everything's kind of hitting us all at once, uh, construction costs and 
and everything, but we're moving forward and closer to actually putting something on the ground. Uh, there's another project I should let you know about, and this is not to do with the bypass trail, but the Riley um, RFP went out, um, and it's due on the 19th of this month for the master plan at the Riley Park. So um, something should come out of that by somewhere in May, maybe before May as far as a master plan for the Riley Park. And that would be a year long process, right? From that uh, pretty much approximately, um, we asked for a timeline and a, and a price, basically in, in on top of what the first proposal was and we'll see what comes out of that. Uh, last time it was put out for an RFP, I think Don did a portion of it. Uh, did the environmental study with NB5. Um, I did hear back from Greenworks. They're not going to submit a proposal. So we still have three. There's uh, Cameron, uh, Walker Macy, and NB5 that are going to submit proposals. So we're, st we're still good on that. Uh, and I want to thank oh, Dana Kemp and uh, Hope Robertson and Brian Bowman <clears throat> for helping me evaluate those RFQs that went out. Um, they did a great job. And we, we learned something. The scoring process can be diversified and then you still come out with uh, pretty good results, uh, even though some people have I guess different ideas on how to score things, um, but I think it all worked out. And uh, was glad to allow all four of the people that submitted for our cues to submit for proposals. So it was a good thing. So we'll bring them back together again when we get the proposals to us, and we'll kind of reevaluate those based on. The time guideline and, and the price. So. Good morning, Bart. So then, your idea would be to have a recommendation to the board of directors for consideration for May. Is that or April or? Uh, it would probably be May. I'd have to look at the scoring. It might. It might be ready for the board meeting on the what's the, when's the board meeting on April before Thursday. It might be the 28th, in which case we might. 27th. You'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if the board wants to spend all that money on it. You don't know how much it is? I have no idea. Hopefully, there isn't 21% uh, escalation in <laughs> master plan development. Well, I don't know what the original proposal was for, but. I know it was quite a bit. Jim might remember that. Uh, the board members that are here might remember that. I don't think. Don't remember. Okay. And we'll likely be involved in that process at some point. Um, I assume later in the fall, probably, as they're getting community engagement. Okay. Yes, and I would. I would I really appreciate what you guys did up there, Quentin, and uh, your your team. It was amazing. <laughs> Islam and, and yourself. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, we are scheduling our trips out there to, to finish the, the job, the rest of the park. So um, I do want to go back and allow others to ask questions too. Um, so I'm looking at a map that Kat gave us of the various phases of the trail, the bypass trail. Mm -hmm. um, so the first phase does currently end at River Street, right? So there, there wouldn't be any, any loss of trail mileage based on the original phase one with the railroad crossing problem that you were talking about. Is that correct? I do not think so. Okay. 
Actually, it might increase because the trail goes from being straight to a serpentine. <laughs> Not much, but maybe no feet or so. But the main hiccup here in this phase one is that bridge, right? Yeah, it, it got extremely expensive. Okay. Uh, and we did talk to ODOT early on about, you know, building off their bridge, putting a pedestrian walk and there are Minuski. Right. Um, the, the one, yes, the one that goes over Hess Creek, um, their bridges weren't designed to have a cantilever or off to the side. So that would have been hugely expensive on my part. Okay. Uh, it might've been the same cost back then, but <laughs> so, like I said, we're, we're working through some issues and hopefully we'll get some help soon. Awesome. Um, and then phase two, uh, that's the one that Kat was looking to apply to the grants. Is that correct? I believe in the fall she was looking at, she submitted an initial application of interest and then was selected to submit a full proposal. That's the one we don't have funding for, correct? At this point, yes. Okay. okay. But that likely would not proceed without the railroad crossing likely from the city investing in that, is that correct? Or finding money elsewhere? Not necessarily. Okay. Have Anybody else have, have any have questions? Question. Yeah. yeah. What happens if you build half a trail and then there's, I mean. Well, you can always go out and come back. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be like a block at that portion. They'll, yeah, they'll just be to be so completed. That'd be a sign that says to be completed. Okay. Yeah. It would end at a sidewalk, right? At River Street, probably. Well, right. there's other options. Yeah. I mean, there's the rail crossing is the big issue, but currently, I haven't seen any rail line rail cars on that track for for a long time. Years. Um, while the mills used it, so used yeah, while they were doing their the demolition. Mills. Yeah. I but lived on they those railroad been tracks. Lately. It's probably been <laughs> when did that shut? They were using it. They definitely were. And yeah, they were crossing they 99. Out. Yeah, they were removing uh, some debris and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I said, they don't know. Um, the city doesn't know. And I don't think it's a good use of taxpayers' money to go in there and spend that and and them decide they don't need it. That's kind of, we could potentially pave over it if we had to, uh, and that would have to come from the mill owners and the city uh, and leave it open to them to open back up later. I would like to mention that there has been a lot of community aggravation and increased attention to River Street over the last um <laughs> week or two and there have been discussions within the community about the railroad tracks and discussions about pavement issues within the city well, and the and the aggravation is building well maybe the, the problem will resolve itself then. i i don't know that that's what are they talking about turning the railroad track what are they saying? Why do we have them? What is it going to be used for? I Everything that was mentioned about there being a tram potentially, and then the responses to that potential plan. There's a lot of opinion in the community currently about this, and it's a very hot topic. I will tell you, as a boat owner going to Rogers Landing, River Street is an absolute disaster. We go down Winooski to get there from where we are. Not everybody has that. or you know, so it's building. There, there need there. I think that the aggravation about solutions for that situation are definitely presenting themselves as something that people are not happy about. So something will have to happen. And I do think that you know, talking about building half a trail, I still see there's 
a lot of benefit once we figure out the bridge situation, you know, connecting over by the airport and I believe kind of into through the, the sidewalks of the streets over to um, the greens and the golf course, connecting that over S Creek into, you know, river street will, will still be a big benefit for the community. Sure. It, it will, it will allow people from all the way from Ewing Young Park to get to the hospital if they wanted to go there or to Fred Meyer or to, like you said, the greens, the golf course, um, Safeways not too far away. Um, so they could technically ride their bike and, and get there. Absolutely. And I wanted to clarify that my question was more about like what happens at the trail's end, like for liability, especially like, do we just fall off the edge or <laughs> so that was, that was good. Yeah. Matt, I think that's you, right? Yeah. Um, my question, I guess, is for Casey. Uh, are there any upcoming uh, approvals through various government committees and bodies or any funding where you could use some additional advocacy help? Any letters that we need to write, any places we need to show up to kind of uh, push this forward in any way? Mm. Not at this this time. The application's been submitted, and we're just kind of waiting. I think Alan said they're going to make a decision sometime this month. Um, last time I talked to him. So. Anything with phase two, the funding of phase two, where we could help with uh, getting the funding? Well, yes, we might need some more money. Okay. <laughs> Uh, seeing how the bridges are um, very expensive, and there is one bridge across Shalem Creek that's I know is bigger and longer than the one on Hess Creek, um, potentially as long as 900 feet long. And I believe the one at Hess Creek is under 600 feet. So, and farther now, too. There's there's another one now. There's and they have to be accessible to emergency services. Is that right? That was one of the challenges? That's one of the challenges. They they have to have at least access from one side or the other. Yeah. I think the primary advocacy right now is to is call your friends to remember to vote in this <laughs> upcoming election. Okay. To that right, point. Thanks. Um, I know the county and city have been going back and forth over, um, forgot the formal name, but the bypass agreement. And I know that the county commissioners removed all language pertaining to trails. Uh, how, how does that impact these discussions if, if it does? I'm not going to make a comment on that. As far as I know, all the Newburgh Dundee bypass trail is all within ODOT's right away. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions for Casey? Quinn, this is Alan. Isn't there an upcoming county or planning commission meeting that um, is sort of critical to this issue? Um, not so much. It's a piece of land that we own in Ewing Park that's, um, we're trying to build a bridge to get access to the property to maintain and to, uh, uh, improve the park. But it's about trails in an agricultural zone and would testimony be helpful? Um, maybe. Um, we're going to call it park improvements. It's not anything but those right now. Uh, okay. That's tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at the Yamhill County Courthouse 32. And I don't see any scheduled meetings for the actual planning commission, which I think, Alan, you were mentioning. Yeah. They might have a discussion around the zoning um, conditional use 
for trails on the AF10 and all those other zoning types that we discussed before. So I don't think they're taking that up quite yet. It doesn't sound like. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Casey. Appreciate the update. Thanks, uh, Next thing on our agenda was, anyone can beat me there. Uh, zoning and trails discussion. Uh, that pretty much doesn't need to happen. We kind of got some of our answers. Um, did submit the letter that we wrote uh, over email. Um, that will be included where it can be. It is a quasi-political uh, appeal process through the county commissioners. Um, and Casey will be taking care of it from here. Uh, or I assume you, Casey. <laughs> um, but at that at this point, because the, the planning commission has not released anything as far as an agenda um, around the zoning changes pertaining to parks or uh, trails, um, there's no further action on that at this time. So we don't have any other letters to write right now because we don't have anything to write them for or against. Uh, trail work party update, Cindy. Well, I'm um, talking to Quentin with ideas. And first of all, I'm kind of taking a uh, communication admin type uh, lead but talking to cat um you soon i was also doing volunteer training and things which i am not the person to tell um someone how to cut things and whatnot so if there's anyone on this committee who wants to kind of take the lead in that that would be i think great you're talking about quentin how cat but i mentioned that i can't be the one to tell people what to do because i'm still healing from a one-year injury of pulling uh, blackberries out of my own black backyard. And I injured myself doing that. So for the sake of lawsuits, lawsuits, someone else should probably be in charge of that. No problem. Yeah, and I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's where Brian and Casey would lead some of the instruction around that and we would have other members there to assist. I know that um matt and i have obviously gone to ETC. i'd be happy to help okay i'd be happy to help with anything um as far as training and kind of organizing small teams and whatever yeah, yeah. yeah. and i know yeah. brian was he's already got a group uh, going up there i forget the date but uh, he's more involved with the park up there Wiley property and we've got some new equipment in the park district that might help us out uh Measurably, so. Russ got some new toys. Russ got some new toys. Uh, <laughs> we got some new toys for uh, trail payments. Yes. Very cool. I think the the main thing that would be helpful for I, I I won't speak for Quentin, but for me, just knowing you know what work does CPRD uh, want done. And um, just kind of the specifications for that. How, how wide of a corridor, you know, are we talking drainage things that we're trying to work on, tread, um, you know, cutting back blackberries, just a clear scope of what the work is. I will have a meeting with Brian and talk to him about that. Okay. So we'll probably include all those things and then we'll learn the specifications and the scope of that work. Um, I think Casey, you and Brian mentioned um, you know, a few weeks before uh, going up there to scope out the conditions of the trails will help inform us where and how much work will need to be done, right? Yeah, and right now it's Camellia Fest and Brian, I don't bother yeah. Brian this week because yeah. he's got it up on his plate. Well, and it's definitely been pretty wet here lately. Mm -hmm. so. But they're doing a lot with machinery up there to a point, but you're still going to need boots on the ground and do some of those smaller culverts and things like that. Sure. So I'm sure that they can find plenty to do for individuals with shovels and picks and, and so on. 
I, and I know he's been working with the equestrians up there. Um, they have a. They were doing their own work party. They are doing their own work party. Um, so, but like like I said, everyone's kind of waiting for the ground to dry up before you go go in some of those shaded areas because they don't dry out so quick. Did you have anything else, Cindy? Yes. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it's just admin questions that I'm just kind of waiting for responses about. But since you, I am not a graphic artist, I'm an abstract artist. You do not want necessarily my artwork on anything you need to read. But we mentioned like a flyer type thing. I sent you this, Quentin. Yep. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. So I'm not sure who needs, I know Kat needs to look at it, but I thought if maybe you knew a true graphic artist, you might want to clean that up. Um, and I need logos and questions about QR codes. We thought about, you know, someone could just take a picture of it and sign up. Um, so question about that, which is floating around. I want to do a digital version of the flyer for computer. And do you have any good pictures of Riley that I could work off of? Um, I mean, I don't personally. I took some okay. of yeah. random trail junctions, but I know Kat might have some okay. in a folder somewhere. Okay, so I sent her a bunch of questions a couple of weeks ago. So I'm kind of waiting for those answers. And then Sign Up Genius, is that where we put in uh, the legal forms for volunteers too, if they signed up the Sign Up Genius? So uh, we'd, about we'd, that that I know nothing about. Yeah, we'd probably do those on site, okay. I'd assume, Casey, that. because I mean, we'd, we'd probably have to figure out a way for all the e-signatures and everything. It'd just be easier for them to do it on site. Okay, I like that answer. And um, yeah, so I'm just waiting a bunch of, maybe I'll reach out to Kat again. I sent her an email a couple of weeks ago with a bunch of questions. Um, but yeah, and also just for outreach in general, I asked her a bunch of questions to um, if what um, CPRD events we could be at, like the Camellia Festival, the you know um, farmer's market. And there, do we have things to pass out? Do we do a QR code that she mentioned? Do we do the QR code? Do you guys do the QR code? So a bunch of admin questions are floating around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll reach out to her as well. I just wrapped up some of the public facing maps for Bob and Crystal Riley Park. So we just released those, or they'll be posted here pretty soon on the website, I believe. Um, so we could probably get a either a web page or an announcement or something on the website about the work party and yes. then she can generate a qr code from that and then we can have the link to the sign up genius and then we can include that link in all of our marketing so hey, michelle isn't this your idea because we ran out of the maps i'm not not just yeah, talking about riley i'm talking about all the, the yeah, downtown coalition said all we need to do is provide them with the qr code for the market which he says it's in play yeah. yeah and that qr code has the yeah. Yeah. We can do whatever you want with a QR code. Take so, them to a page where. Oh, well, I know. Yeah, we know what we want. Do we have I mean, something already? Is that something you guys would do? Yeah, I, I think I, we just need it because we're out of these, and this is what you passed out, right? Okay. Yeah, so I think that's that. what they're currently redesigning. I right. Think. So I guess we won't have those for. Uh, it's going to the printers, I think, pretty quick. So yeah, she's going to give us a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So then we can get boots on the ground. But so we speak. can get a QR, QR code, code now on okay, the so current this, one and update it later on yeah. with the same QR code. That'd be great. Code. So, right. yeah. This yeah. is the people would like that. Okay, we'll work on it now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that's something that we could distribute and we could even um, probably just promote more generally, um, just like our event. You know, yeah. if it's not in print yet, or I guess when it is, we can also have a, the digital version promoted in addition to that. Sure. And also, if anyone else here wants to be involved in putting this trail estate together, you're more than welcome. Yes, sir. If you want to be part of the communications on the email, it's a blast. I'm still recovering for your smoker because I got to take that tent down. So. <laughs> so, yeah, but once, um, so we're just getting through the, you know, the background creating this event and there's just a lot of questions. So if anyone else wants their two cents put in, I would appreciate that. I'd be happy. I'll, I have the branding 
guides mm -hmm. from Cat as far as all the colors and logos and such for yeah. stuff. So I can work with Cat because I also do graphic design at Oregon State. So um, I can help throw together some of the materials. I think the main thing is since I'm not over there, folks that can help distribute the physical flyers or whatever the other mediums that we select. But um, yeah. and I'm I should be more responsive. I I was at a conference for a week and then the new term started spring break. So um, I should have some more time to dedicate to this. I think we're pretty close. Um, I mean, having the sign up genius and the marketing out by our next meeting should give us plenty of time. I mean, a month to gather volunteers. And if we, you know, spread the word via our personal channels and the other marketing, I'm sure Kat will make a news release, probably be picked up by the news media. Um, we should be able to garner some, some pretty good volunteers. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your work. All right. Um, and then board of directors meeting report um, went to the meeting. There was a very small crowd last last month. Uh, not a whole lot happened. Uh, gave my report. Um, gave my appreciation to Kat, Casey, Brian, and Richard, and the board still appreciates our support. So um, nothing too crazy to report back this this month, unless our two board members in attendance have anything else to add. We just, we just try not to be crazy. <laughs> no, it was great, and we appreciate all you folks have done. Sure. Absolutely. Cool. Well, that's all on the agenda. I will say, Alan mentioned this, and I know, um, Pete, I got your phone call and your text message, and I'm certainly spreading the word. But uh, just a reminder for folks, I won't make any type of statements, but do go out and vote in this election for the at-large CPRD members. Um, and there's, of course, other... Um, jurisdictions with with elections and, and candidates on the ballot, I believe the school board. So make sure you do go out there and read the voters pamphlet and make your your choice as a, a member of our citizenry. Anybody else have anything to add there? Uh, just on Matt's letter that he wrote that you shared. Um, Matt, you did. A, I think it was a wonderfully written, yeah. clear, to the point. Uh, very well done. Thank you very much for that. I have to share at least uh, probably 80% of the credit with uh, Quinton. He cleaned it up quite a bit from what I sent him. So uh, thanks, Quinton. I appreciate everyone's patience and cooperation in that kind of unorthodox method that we went about getting that done, but I do appreciate it. Um, that was a great piece of advocacy that we could do. Well, then thank you too, Quinton. Anything else, uh, Alan, yeah, I did include in the in the agenda. Did you want to mention the event? Yeah, I'm on the board of the West Side or Yam Hillis West Side or Trail, and they're doing a Rails to Trails event at Banks Vernonia on April 22nd. You can check their website for details, but it's mostly about building awareness for trails, um, given that we have political situation in the county, but... Um, they're chipping away at it. And so the more support, more awareness we can build, presumably the better. Very cool. And that is again, linked in our important reminders and notes on the agenda page. So you can go in there and, and find the webpage for that in our agenda. And there is the, I don't, I don't know if they still have openings, but the uh, PCTA is hosting their Trail Skills College the 28th through the 30th at Cascade Locks, if anyone's interested in that as well. All right, anything else? Anything from you, Casey? Anything else beyond your update? Not at this time. Awesome. You know, one thing that I can bring up um, off the top is I was hiking up at the, the Riley property, walking the trails and stuff, and some bikers came along and real muddy and so on because but the information from cprd said trails are open in the spring well it was the first day of spring and the you know they were riding it and they were they were just kids they're real respectful they said oh we're sorry we didn't realize it's the first day of spring so we got on her so the trail committee might want to come up with something to think about uh, to educate the public about you know it's not gonna it's not gonna be dry the first day of spring 
and so and that's it could be an issue so we just so and that includes the folks and horses too even though when i went up there i thought the trails were in great shape with all the rains that we had at least on the east side i need to go on the west side so i mean i, I it's, it's something this trail committee might want to think about in education so we don't get people saying oh it's first day of spring we're open and let's rock well uh, the question is how does the public know when it's officially open and when i mean because you make the journey to get there maybe is there is there an announcement on the cprd website or something when trails should I really believe, be open i believe cats and in, in discussions with brian and russ and they make that determination i don't know how close they are i mean it dries up for a week and it's fine and then it Dumps rain, so it's on and off. Yeah, you could say something like, if the area is muddy, please do not use or something, because I don't know. They have to think of something because and these kids are really respectful and they took off and they fell on their bike. And well, it would be something crashed. where I would respond, like, where do I find out? Right. It is on the website um, that the trails, or... you're at November. Uh, Kat put an update on here no hooves or tires, it's wet. And then I, I assume in response to that incident, April 2023, it's still wet. Um, we will announce when trails will open again. Yeah, because I did talk to Kat about it. I said it's something to think about. I mean, and, and these kids were fine. I mean, they were they were very respectful. And When you physically go up there, is there any way to know? Hmm? Like, it would you be didn't nice check a website, before you right? make a half-hour like drive sort of, up there. To... Yeah. Right. So that's maybe something to... Check, check the webpage. And I think there were signs, but the problem was, uh, even when we were there um, doing our mapping, some of the signs were laminated and then either people or the weather made them unreadable. So then it kind of poses a challenge of there was information posted, you know, Russ had posted various signs throughout for different regulatory reasons, but they just weren't lasting as long as the regulation that they were posting about was intended for. So um, I do know um, working with Brian, met with Brian and Casey and Russ and Kat, um, they're getting the first round of signage up here for the opening. So we are on schedule for that, I believe, Casey. Yes, as far as awesome. I know. Yep. So um, we'll be looking, we'll be hopefully up by the, the work party or we can help put it in. Um, but that'll, that'll probably aid in some of the communication as well, having a place to post additional signage at the trailheads rather than once people kind of get out on the trails as well. I'm sure more than more stuff like what Oregon State's done at their research forest for trail closure, right? It doesn't necessarily solve the problem if you get there, but you know, it seems very fair, uh, clear what the condition on these points is. Like in the shoulder seasons when one day it could be perfect and the next day it could be easy. And that's published on their website. So you check it. Or, I've said it before. I did want it again. Yeah. Well, how do how do users know? Were you saying it was published? On they that? have it at kind of a key trail kiosk. So it's like, excuse me, trail heads. Okay. So, so when actually, they show but up, but you still got to drive half hour to find that out. Right? But yeah, they don't have. That. I don't know if they maintain. Yeah, I don't know if there's an answer, but I'm just trying to bring it up. Yeah. No, I know it's a complicated question. And there are different ways that you can go about that. I mean, companies just like that sell the signs that CPRD will be looking at. I mean, you can find like some of the uh, campground, you know, the vacancy, no vacancy that have the little flip. I'm sure they make some that are like trails are open or closed, or you can think about, you know, uh, reusable plastic or metal signs that could be put out when the trails are closed and just, you know, nailed in or screwed in every season onto a post rather than like laminated paper or something like that. Well, I, I, we're getting away from laminated paper. That's, <laughs> that doesn't work out. That only works for temporary. Like no horses on Getman. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't commit the staff to this, but I know like for our ball fields, there's a rain out, call that number, tells you whether they're open or not. But I'm not sure that our staff has the ability to. For trails. Yeah. To do for that for trails. Yeah, I know. Well, the weather's different up there than it is. That's true too. The Ewing, for example. I mean, the golf course is different from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's oh, lots of different microclimates here. 
think for trail users, sometimes it's frustrating, like especially just blanket closures, yeah. and especially this time of year, where even depending on exposure, slow right. soil type that one end of the park versus the other, you know, there's stuff enough to stay off of. This is until yeah. 4th of July, and some stuff is good for that. Well, well, the goal is to try and make the trails uh, walkable pretty much year round. Um, like you and Young is. Like you and Young. Now, we can do that. Um, there might be, like you said, some trails that you just can't do that. Right. But at least if you have some trail up there, mm -hmm. I mean, if they can't walk every trail, but there's the main trail, there should be a main trail. There there should be a total main trail you should yeah. be able to walk there. I like your suggestion about the solar season and common sense and stuff can change. And it's, it's I'm not that technologically literate, but isn't there, couldn't you have a CPRD trails user forum that users would just uh, report, you know, conditions of trails on a, you know, gym when you're out there walking, you'd, you know. Kind of like all trails? Walk. Yeah. It's the only way to get it up to the minute or update. Unless there's somebody that's actually designated by the CPRD to go around and check on trails on a continual basis. Are you guys talking about user submitted reports of trail issues? Yeah. Okay. So um, one of my projects that is getting built this fall um, is GPS. So you go to a web page, it'll ask to get your GPS from your phone. You can submit pictures report and know exactly where the person is at. Oh, that's great. And that can be emailed and, you know, into our soon to be built facility management and park management system that I've been working on. And how does a user know that they can do that? There's so a for, code or... for that, it would either be a tap or scan or go to the link. And then it just pulls up in the browser. It'll ask to get permissions to access the GPS. They can take pictures, submit that all as, as a form basically online. So I think some cities do that with like potholes and stuff like that too. Like Red to every every step. So that's good news, Richard just had to be a uh, QR if it works. works. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. So the second page on there uh -huh. is to a, uh, an image file on Google okay. that will generate the QR code. So if you need to copy that and put it in okay. something. Thank you. Do you have his contact information? Is he in the group for these kinds of things? Because he does a lot of tech. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. This is great. Awesome. Anything else? Good discussion today. Okay. Well, um, I'm just going to go ahead and close today's meeting, uh, adjourn, and our next meeting will be on May 10th. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks.